Bellamy's mother gave birth to Octavia in secret 17 years ago because it was against the rules for women to have a second child on the Ark. Even though she was sobbing in pain and discomfort, she refused to call an ambulance. After his sister was born, Bellamy checked on her well-being and has cared for her ever since. Before every inspection, they concealed her inside a tiny crevice in the ground. Octavia only ever interacted with her mother, brother, and herself as she was growing up. She was confined to a room for the first 16 years of her life, frequently beneath the floor. Their mother charmed superiors in order to secure Bellamy a position as a guard. Although it increased safety a little, Octavia's loneliness was not alleviated. One day, some teenagers planned a neighborhood mascot party, which provided her with the ideal cover to leave unnoticed. Bellamy allowed her to enjoy herself for the evening because he was a guard and could keep her safe. But when a solar flare was required to end the party, everything went wrong. When the security guards showed up to ensure their safety, Octavia wound up getting caught. Their mother was consequently floated, Bellamy lost his job, and Octavia was locked up. The commander called Bellamy to have a private conversation a year later. Bellamy had not seen his sister in over a year by this point and was now just a janitor. The commander informed him that Octavia was among the 100 sent to the planet Earth. Bellamy would do anything to get to his sister, and he was aware of this. Therefore, the commander gave Bellamy a gun and instructed him to shoot the Chancellor in exchange for a seat in the dropship. Bellamy sees the chance and is now on the planet. He now realizes that Octavia is gone from the camp. Despite searching every tent, he is unable to locate her, although Clark still has anger toward him for damaging the radio. She agrees to assist him in finding his sister. Then, Octavia is seen waking up in a room after being brought there by a grounder. A grounder appears in front of her just as she realizes that her knee's bone has been severely dislocated. Then the screen goes black as he attacks her with a hot metal rod. On Bellamy's instruction, the 100 form a search party inside the camp. Because he has grown to like Clark, Finn is tense. He is unsure of what to do now that Raven has risked her life to reach him. When he tries to speak with Clark, she rejects him. Knowing that Raven needs him more than she does, she wants to back off. The group looks outside and sees several flashing lights in the sky. The dead bodies of the people being thrown from the Ark car what they interpret the lights as being. Bellamy is to blame for all the deaths because they could have notified the Ark in time if he hadn't thrown the radio away. He doesn't want to discuss it right now and is instead concentrating on finding Octavia. During the time that Clark and Raven are constructing the radio, Finn joins the search team. Octavia eventually wakes up again and discovers that Herney has been taken care of. It turns out that the grounder who first appeared was attempting to assist her. She begins looking for a way out, but she knows she can't stay in the room for too long. She manages to squeeze through the narrow opening between a loose stone she finds on the wall. She is brought back to all the hours she used to spend in the cramped space under the floor by this. Though her trauma resurfaces, she manages to remain calm. She eventually makes it outside and takes off running. The group locates Octavia's footprints elsewhere and follows them to the entrance to the grounders area. To deter others, it has human remains strung from the trees. Most people head back to the camp because they aren't willing to take any chances with their lives, but Bellamy, Jasper, Finn, and a few more of their friends continue on foot. While this is going on, Raven and Clark visit the bunker to look for the mechanical components they need to repair the radio. Clark is not in the mood to listen when Raven talks to her about her mother. She doesn't want to think about her mother at all now that she knows she was responsible for Jake's demise. Additionally, because of Finn, there is a strange air of awkwardness between Clark and Raven. They discover a remote-controlled toy car that contains all the radio's components. When the group first landed, they saw a two-headed deer sculpture made of tiny metal, which Raven finds while exploring the area. When they were together a few days ago, Finn made it for Clark. When Raven realizes that Finn was with Clark prior to her arrival, she understands that he only makes those for the people he loves. When a grounder who had been hiding in the trees kidnaps one of their friends, Bellamy and the group are still moving forward. They soon come under attack from numerous other grounders who are much better hunters than they are. Bellamy's only option is to flee for his life while praying nobody gets hurt. A girl is also killed when a guy walks into the grounder's trap and is impaled to a sharp branch. Octavia spots her friends nearby and is about to follow them when the grounder who earlier assisted her stops her. He soothes her and returns her to the cover they were in. Octavia recognizes that he is attempting to protect her from the other grounders who are beheading her friends. 
As a result, when he takes her back, she doesn't object. He even picks her up when she is too tired to continue walking. He doesn't respond when Octavia tries to speak to him, leading her to believe that he doesn't speak their language. He ties her up in the hideout to prevent her from escaping once more. Bellamy and the group are encircled by the killer grounders when they return to the woods. When a warhorn sounds warning everyone of an approaching acid fog, they are only seconds away from being attacked. The group is in disarray as the grounders flee. They take cover under a tent and pray for the best because they did not have time to find a safe location. They notice the alarm was false when they go outside a short while later. Bellamy then sees the grounder that helped Octavia. He goes to the man's hideout after him. Although the group is unaware of it, it is obvious that the grounder is assisting them in finding her. The girls locate what they're looking for back in the bunker and head back to the camp. Raven is quieter than usual, so Clark notices and wonders what's wrong. She is questioned by Raven after she admits to hooking up with Finn. Raven's accusation is only confirmed by Clark's silence. She doesn't care that Finn cheated on her because she is so attached to him. She prefers to move past it and keep being his girlfriend. The grounder returns to Octavia in the hideout, but she knocks him out before he can hurt her. Bellamy and the group arrive at that precise moment and free her from the chains. Octavia prevents Bellamy from killing the grounder as he wishes. The grounder suddenly awakens and stabs Finn in the chest. Before collapsing, Finn notices that the man had a blowhorn on him, indicating that he was the one who had rescued them from the other grounders. He is knocked out and taken hostage by the group. They rush over to the camp carrying a hurt Finn. The knife is still inside his body, shocking both Clark and Raven. More than ever, they need to speak with Abby because Clark needs her mother's help to save Finn. Raven puts a lot of effort into trying to construct the radio now that she has all the necessary components. The council is currently holding a hearing to talk about the crime Abby committed. Her crimes are all punishable by death, but they are all excused because the Ark needs her medical knowledge. She is nonetheless dismissed from the council. According to Abby, the flash they observed yesterday was a message from the inhabitants of Earth. Kane tries to tell her to stop with the conspiracy theories, but the radio is cut off by static. With the Ark, Raven has at last established communication. When she declares that the Earth is habitable, the Ark is filled with the sound of her voice. The council members are all in a panic and unsure of what to do. From the other end, Clark calls her mother and begs for assistance in trying to save Finn's life. While everyone is celebrating, the Chancellor learns that his son has passed away. Abby is allowed to speak with Clark, and he steps away to gather himself. The Grounder is brought to the camp and restrained at the same time by Bellamy and his goons. To better prepare for the upcoming attack, they want to use him to learn more about his people. As they prepare to stab Finn, Clark and Raven sanitize themselves. To ensure his survival, the procedure must be carried out precisely. It becomes more challenging as the connection to the other side is lost multiple times during the process. Against Octavia's wishes, Bellamy has tied the grounder up in the vault. Bellamy refuses to listen when she begs him to let the man go because he saved her life. He believes that this issue affects his people, not just his sister. Then Diana, the former Chancellor of the Ark who was ousted by the populace, is introduced. The people are outraged that their loved ones perished in the execution when there was a way for everyone to survive, she tells the Chancellor. The Chancellor acknowledges that he must be honest with the people even though he dislikes her. Clark retrieves the knife from Finn's chest and brings it back to the camp. He falls off the table due to an unexpected thunder, but the procedure is successful. Last but not least, Clark closes the wound and keeps Finn alive. Following that, Abby wants to speak with her daughter but Clark isn't receptive. When Bellamy goes through the grounder's belongings, he discovers a notebook and a box of herbs. The camp, the woods, and Octavia are all sketched in the book. It also lists the names and numbers of those who have passed away in the camp. To request that Bellamy release the grounder, Clark comes to the vault. His people will be enraged if they hold him hostage. However, Bellamy is unconcerned with the consequences. He believes that they will be attacked by the grounders in some way, and that the only way to stop them is to be ready. Finn suddenly experiences a seizure. When the girls learn that the knife he was stabbed with was poison, they become terrified. When it is revealed that the earth is habitable, Cain is the most alarmed. He holds himself accountable for the senseless deaths of 300 people. He could have prevented those deaths if he had simply waited a couple more hours. People try to attack him because they share his sentiment. The Chancellor summons the common people to a meeting while stopping everyone else. 
He aspires to be like Jake and not let the public and the council know any lies. He explains everything about the 100 and how the Earth has affected them during the meeting. Additionally, he asserts that they couldn't have reached Earth at the current rate, so the execution of their loved ones has given them more time. However, the populace continues to reject the council. The Chancellor switches Diane in place of Abby because they believe in and obey her. The populace agrees and joins forces with the council when she requests their assistance. Diane is then seen exchanging knowing glances with a man in the crowd who was the main protester. They intended to raise a fuss in order to have her brought before the council, and the plan was successful. Clark rushes to the grounder as Finn's condition deteriorates and begs him to reveal the location of the antidote. She arranges the herbs in front of him and implores him to make a decision. When he still won't speak, Bellamy beats him mercilessly with a belt. Even though Octavia makes every effort to stop them, Bellamy is supported by Clark as long as she obtains the antidote. Raven decides to take action and electrocutes the defenseless grounder. Nevertheless, the man stays silent. Octavia finally takes the knife and stabs herself. The grounder gestures toward a plant because he cannot see her get hurt. Finn nods off after receiving the antidote. When Abby finally has a chance to speak with Clark, she inquires as to her condition. When Clark accuses her of Jake's murder, she is rendered speechless. While Abby cannot deny it, she is adamant that she only told the Chancellor so that he could convince Jake not to do anything wrong. Clark is still unable to forgive her for it. The Grounder's wound is being cleaned by Octavia in the vault when the Grounder softly thanks him, demonstrating that he can understand their language. However, Octavia is unable to stay with him for much longer because her brother's assistant is watching them. Finn awakens at the same time as Finn. Before giving him directions to his girlfriend, he first meets Clark. Now that Raven is here, she doesn't want to get in the way of their relationship. A council meeting is held on the Ark to discuss the next move. Project Exodus, which involves sending every Ark inhabitant underground, must be launched. It is complicated, though, because there are only 700 dropships and there are over 2,000 people living there. Thank you for watching. Why don't you consider subscribing while you're here? We have the best recaps around and would love to have you part of our community. Thank you and see you in the next one.